Fred Astaire residence. Who's calling, please? Uh, this is the Bing Crosby residence. Mr. Crosby would like to speak to Mr. Astaire. Mm -hmm. Well, if, uh, if you'll hold the line, I'll see if Mr. Astaire is available to speak to Mr. Crosby. But while I'm holding, I'll see if Mr. Crosby's ready to speak with Mr. Astaire when he does get on the line. Uh, well, in the interest of time, why does Mr. Crosby want to speak to Mr. Astaire? Well, not that it's any of your business, but I assume that it has something to do with the fact that Mr. Crosby has an extremely high regard for Mr. Astaire, both as a performer and a person. That's understandable. And would like to work on a special project with him. Well, not that I'm authorized to speak for Mr. Astaire, but I believe it's safe to say that Mr. Crosby is one of Mr. Astaire's favorite crooners. I'm not surprised. And that the prospect of working with Mr. Crosby would not be at all unpleasant. <laughs> Precisely, what is the project? Oh, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information to just anyone. But I believe it has something to do with recording a record album together. Hmm. I'm sure Mr. Astaire would be able to drum up some degree of enthusiasm. Well, speaking for Mr. Crosby, we'll gladly pursue this. But I must tell you something before we can do this. Both parties must agree to a few very basic things. Hmm? Uh, to put you at ease, sir. Please do. We're not hard to please. Yes, I've heard that. Uh, Mr. Astaire is aware that Mr. Bing is king. When he sings... Hard to be working with Fred, of course, is very thrilling. Oh, get your goosebumps, huh? But I look to Crosby's agent. He's a tiger. He'll demand top billing. Ah, you brought up a question. What's the problem? But here's a suggestion. Yes? Why don't they sell it just like A, B, C and make the billing alphabetically? Well, that sounds reasonable. Bing comes before Fred. We were thinking more in terms of last names. A for stare, C for cross, and F for forget it. <laughs> you, uh... You call that an answer? Well, actually, you know, Fred is, uh, is a dancer. <laughs> but in his time, he's introduced some songs you know. Yes, but they should call the album Bing and Fred. Uh, we much prefer Fred and Bing instead. Well, it sounds to me as if this thing is dead, stone dead. Uh, but I, I really hate to see it die. Well, our producer, so do I. So you tell Fred, and you will say to Bing, they, they should call the album Two Old Dummies Sing. <laughs> you know, that might just solve the problem. Sounds reasonable to me. Well, then tell Mr. Astaire that Mr. Crosby would appreciate it very much if he would be at Mr. Crosby's house tomorrow morning to start picking songs for the album. Dress is casual. Casual it is. I will relay the message to Mr. Astaire. Thanks, Fred. See you tomorrow, Bing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas, Fred, from The Crosbys, starring Bing Crosby, with Catherine Crosby, Harry Crosby, Mary Frances Crosby, Nathaniel Crosby, their guests, the Young Americans, and special guest star, Fred Astaire. F-16 flash, perfecto. Let me see, I'll be in the middle. Mary Francis there, Kathy. Harry there in the thin. Great. Oh, when it gets to be the week before, the week before, the week before the holiday, my children hear me say, we must get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready for the holiday. And even though they know that it's true, they never do what they're supposed to do. They're too busy dancing or golfing or learning to play. And when I need them around me, they're always a ways away. Would you sit with me, please? Every year around this time, we take the family photograph, which then becomes the family Christmas card. Around this time, most every year, the children...
children tend to disappear, and getting them together is very hard. Oh, you spoke a book, my dear. You, know, you take our youngest son, Nathaniel. All he thinks about is golf. I can't imagine where he gets it. Oh, you can, eh? Darling, please put up that golf club. It clashes with your tuxedo. Now, why do I have to wear this? Athletes don't get dressed up. Listen, son, if Joe Namath can wear pantyhose, you can wear a tux. And then we have our eldest, Harry. He loves to play the guitar. It's so fun. <laughs> Harry, you know that guitar is driving me crazy? No, Dad, but if I'm a few bars, I'll try and fake it. <laughs> then there's our lovely daughter, Mary Frances. Mary Frances dances. And dances, and dances, and dances. <laughs> The ballet of the red shoes will not be danced tonight. Instead, we will be doing our picture-taking scene from La Casa Cruz. Now that we're gathered here, as we do every year, let's begin getting into the Christmas spirit. The week before the holiday, the week before the holiday, for we hear our father say, we must get ready to get ready to the stocking. I may be rushing things, but deck the halls again now. We never do what we're supposed to For we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols at the spinet. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Need a little Christmas. Everybody ready? Everybody's ready. If you please, then say cheese, then craft. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. What? Okay, Maggie, take the shot. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Fred. I thought you said dress casually. Well, that I did. But even the dog looks elegant. Hi, Fred. <laughs> oh, we just put these clothes on to take a photograph. Oh, I feel a lot better. Hey, you want to shoot around the golf, Uncle Fred? Sure. Want to hear my new song, Uncle Fred? Huh? Want to watch me dance oh, one leg, children, Uncle Fred? leave your Uncle Fred alone. He came here to work with your father. Yeah. What, are you going to teach him how to dance? No. You're going to teach him how to sing? I wouldn't dream of it. Then what are you going to do? Well, Uncle Fred came here because he and I are going to do an album together. I'm going to pick out some songs. Now, if you children watch, you can stick around and listen. You'll hear some lovely old evergreen. Got to run, Dad. Got to fly, Dad. Got to dance, Dad. You sure know how to clear a room. I guess so. How about you, Catherine? You want to listen? Oh, I, I think I'll wait and see the finished product, OK? Seems to make it unanimous. Not really. Want to check with the dog? Oh, the unkindest cut of all. <laughs> Come on in the music room, Fred. We can be alone then. I think we can go anywhere in the house and be alone. <laughs> Your piano player here, I'd have brought mine too. That's no piano player, that's Joey Bushkin. Hey, Bing only says that because he knows the way I play. Hey, how are you, Fred? Hello, Joe. It's nice to see you again. Gee, you know, no one's ever said that to me before. Oh. Fred, uh, Joe was kind enough to come over here and volunteer his services. I always asked to get paid, but Pops over here didn't want to spoil my amateur stand. Well, we'll, we'll sort that out later, Joe. We got a lot of business to take care of here. We got to pick 12 songs for this album. Well, that should be a cinch. I mean, there's so many great songs to choose from. All right, here's one, for instance. Here. All right, let's see. I just got an invitation through the mail. Your presence requested this evening is formal, top hat, white tie, and tail. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you get that? Right where you hid it. In this folio of Eskimo walrus hunting songs. <laughs> I can imagine how it ever got there. Well, no matter. Uh, getting back to our immediate problem, I, I think it's important to select an opening song that's contemporary, you know? Yeah, something with a nice beat in it, but we don't want anything too frantic. No, something familiar that people can hum. You know, here's one that I think just might fit, fit the bill. Here, here it is. I have, no, here, this one here. Oh. Try that, Joe. Do I have a choice? Joe, we're trying to broaden your horizons. Now play it, please. 
So you want to lead or you want to follow? Oh, well, let's jump in together. I'm with you all the way. <laughs> sing, sing a song. Sing out loud, sing out strong. It's a pretty good piece of material. Sing of good things, not bad. Sing of happy, not sad. Sing, sing a song. Make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. So far, so good, huh? Shall we take it up a half beat? You can take the altitude. Try. Sing. That is what he said. Sing a song, make it up in your head. Sing out loud, try to improvise. Sing out strong until you realize it's best to sing. Sing of good things, not bad. Never fear, cause all you gotta do is sing. Sing of happy, not sad. Everybody has to learn to just relax and sing. Hum a little too. Sing a song, you'll feel better soon. Make it simple, build the charm to last your whole life long. Now don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song, sing along, sing a song. Sing out strong, sing a song. You want to know what I think? No. no. Okay, I'll tell you. It's not bad. But without the guy on the keyboard, forget it. Man, he's a hard dog to keep under the porch, isn't he? <laughs> Pretty good progress, don't you think? Considering the problems we've had with the rhythm section, not too bad. <laughs> Anybody in need of a little refreshment? Oh, well, that'd be lovely. What have you got? Orange juice. I should have known. Uh, you got any stronger? Like what? Uh, lemon juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's it going? Oh, fine, fine. Just fine. Do you have any idea when you'll be through? Because the children would like to use the music room. What for? Well, a few of their friends are coming over and they're going to rehearse for the school concert. Well, which is more important, the selection of songs for an album by two of the giants of the industry or the, the rehearsal for a school concert? <laughs> we'll be out here in five minutes. That won't be necessary. The kids can rehearse in the living room. Like I said, we're not moving. Right, Fred? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're gonna rehearse in here. Uh, my dad's using the music room. Oh. Hey, is your dad really Bill Cosby? <laughs> no, he's Bill Crosby. Oh, I've heard of him. He plays golf, doesn't he? Between naps. <laughs> Are we going to rehearse in the music room? No, my dad's working in there with Fred Astaire. Who's Fred Astaire? Mm. Only the greatest dancer in the world. Is he on Soul Train? <laughs> no, he's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in there? Nobody else, just Joe Bushkin. Joe Bushkin? You mean Joe Bushkin, the world's greatest piano oh, player? In there? Yeah. <laughs> You're not, by any chance, thinking of deserting me and, and joining forces with the younger generation, are you? Not at all, not at all, Fred. I'll stick with the golden old. You no, know, if there's one thing I've always admired about being Fred, it's a sense of loyalty. Mm -hmm. That's true. When I think of all those years he wasted playing second fiddle to Bob Hope, I weep. Second fiddle to Hope? <laughs> What'd you put in this kid's orange juice? Are all those road pictures following around the world playing straight while he got all the laughs? You didn't have to do that. We were partners, Fred. Partners? Yeah. 
if you'd c called me to do those pictures with, I'd have shown you what a real partnership was like. I've never seen you this agitated before. Well, I'm, of course I'm agitated. I'm, out I'm outraged. Why, if you'd have been working with me, you could have been a star. I'm deeply touched. I just wished I'd known about it a little sooner. I'll bet you two would have been great together on the road. Oh, I can see it now. A stare and Crosby on the road to Morocco. Crosby and a stare, the road to Bali. <laughs> Too bad Dorothy Lamar isn't here. We could recreate those golden moments for the album. Yes. Great pity we just don't have anybody for the love interest. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Please, don't expect any special favors yet. Sit down, Joe. Sit down. <laughs> Captain, you don't happen to have a sarong, do you? Well, uh, why, why don't you just take a sleeve? Now you take the other sleeve yeah. and make a wish. Talk about the long arm of coincidence. <laughs> Does this mean I don't get the part? Play, Joe. When two guys pull together, it's teamwork. In foul or sunny weather, it's teamwork. What does it take to make any business climb? You'll find it takes teamwork every time. Consequently, nobody makes it solo. It's teamwork. One tycoon can't play polo. It's teamwork. What simple thing can bring you that winning score? The answer is teamwork. You gotta have teamwork. Unless you got teamwork, there's no team. We're off on the road to Morocco, instead of the tunnel of love. The funny streets are nice and dark. The music is unique. I can be the harem girl. I can be the sheik. Tell the gang so they won't hang around. Get lost. Like Webster's Dictionary, we're around. You need a vacation. Brazil is the place you should be. So you can't understand what they're saying. Or you can't read a sign that you see. But you don't have to know the language with the moon in the sky and a girl in your arms and a look in her eye. No, you don't have to know. If you don't want to say goodbye, we're on our way to Appalachian the FLA. Magnolia trees and blossoms and a pretty southern gal. It's better than the orange robe and cucamonga cow. We're gonna stay along the Appalachian Bay. Now we may stop in Okeechobee for some harmony grits. I'll pass through Tallahassee if the weather permits. But we're on our way to Hong Kong and Morocco, Utopia and Bali, Zanzibar and Rio. Lots of places left to see. Oh, we're on our way to Apalachicola. But I'm looking for Ginger Rogers. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. Yeah, that's what Custer said at Little Bighorn. <laughs> you talk about surprises. The minute my back is turned, you go looking for my replacement. Don't you have any sense of loyalty? I would never presume to replace you. Why, you're an American institution. Yeah, yeah so is Sing Sing. <laughs> that geriatric John Denver talked you into this, didn't he? I cannot tell a lie. I now know I could never replace you, but I could replace him. Hit it, Joe. To Apalachicola, F-L-A. What? Oh, look at you. You're still fresh as a daisy. Don't you ever wilt? I'm not allowed to. It's very bad for my image. <laughs> well, never mind. Let's get back to this album thing. You know, yeah. according to my calculations, we've gone through 2,400 and 
65 songs, and so far, we've only selected two tunes. One of which he doesn't even love. Hey, that's right. <laughs> but I do have a tune that would be perfect for you music love. Not Hey, Look at Me Now. Oh, now, believe me, it's another karaoke. Another karaoke? How's it going? It's just another karaoke. <laughs> Well, maybe we're going about this whole thing in the wrong way, Fred. You know, we've uh, handled all the songs that you sang. We've tried all the songs I sang, but we haven't examined the songs that we did together. Well, you mean the songs from uh, Holiday Inn, Blue Skies? Precisely. Like now, you remember the movie, Blue Skies, a lot of good songs. There must be something in there that we could do. Blue Skies, Blue Skies. Now, what was the song we did from Blue Skies? You're right, you're right. There was a tune in there. I got it right on the tip of my tongue. I can't call it. Mine, too. I, I, that's it. That's right. Yes, a couple of song and dance men. I must be playing even worse than I thought. <laughs> you remember the fun we had doing that number? For you? Remember, I had a hard time going back to Ginger after dancing with you. <laughs> oh, I slowed you up a little, I guess. But it was a ball, as I recall. Oh, that it was. <laughs> Us, you see a couple of song and dance men. I'm the song, I'm the dance. For laughter, joy, and happiness, we're advanced men. With a song and the dance. I sing for my supper, I dance for my lunch. And I croon when the landlord comes around. For miles and miles, the women and children pass out cold when my voice hits the air and my feet hit the ground. Isn't it curious how it all comes back to <laughs> Last night, out in the moonlight, I came to serenade a very pretty maid. I sang her to sleep with a sleep in the deep. Oh, that always makes them collapse As in sections i saw her eyes close then i started to doze but she arose when i sounded taps which goes to show what women will do when we're around and my voice hits the air and my feet hit the ground And my feet, those ever loving feet, hit the ground. <laughs> Pain of it all. Look at him, still neat. You know, the first time we did that number, there wasn't a hair out of place then either. I can't help it. It's just the way I am. Well, while you're luxuriating in your imperturbability, I think I'll go out and get a dictionary and see what I just said. I'll go with you. Who's that? Oh, Harry. Of course I'm up. What time is it? Well, 3 a.m. 
You don't think I'd be sleeping at 3 a.m., do you? And where have you been? Do you know it's 3 a.m.? No, I don't know it, but if you hum a few bars, maybe I can fake it. <laughs> no time for jokes. Come on. You're telling me love is no laughing matter. Love? What are you talking about? What's love got to do with this? Dad, can I speak with you man to man? Well, as long as we're both men, I think that'd be a, an ideal arrangement, Jim. Dad, were you ever in love when you were my age? When I was your age, I was always in love. Well, was it wonderful or terrible? I'd have to say it was wonderful. Terrible. <laughs> Gee, Uncle Fred, I'm, I'm sorry we woke you. <laughs> Nobody should sleep when hearts are on fire. <laughs> Uncle Fred, you're a man of the world. You're sophisticated and knowledgeable. And neat. Don't forget neat. <laughs> Do you have any advice to give a man in my condition? Well, ordinarily, I'd su suggest a cold shower and a good night's sleep. But I doubt if that's the kind of advice you're looking for. <laughs> Each man has to find out about love for himself. True. But if you hope for the best, expect the worst, and end up somewhere in between, you'll have learned an important lesson. Right. And you will have learned that the next time you think you're in love, you'll ask your mother about it. <laughs> He's asleep. Well, so was I. He woke me up. What's he doing down here? Why isn't he in his own room? Oh, well, he got in late last night and he wanted to have a private chat with me, you know, man talk. Oh, you mean about love being wonderful and terrible? Oh, why am I always the last to know? Harry, better get up. The kids are already here to rehearse. Is it morning already? Yeah. Well, thanks, Mom. Doesn't that man ever even get crumpled? Never. You know, we're all so familiar with the story of Christ that I think perhaps we tend to forget how truly remarkable it is in its simplicity. There was a man born of Jewish parents in an obscure village. The child of a peasant woman, he grew up in another obscure village. And he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book, he never held office, he never owned a home, he never had a family. He never went to college and he never put his foot inside a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did any of the things that usually accompany greatness. And while still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away and he was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial, and his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had, his coat. And when he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave. Nineteen wide centuries have come and gone, and today he is the centerpiece of much of the human race. All the armies that ever marched and all the navies that were ever built and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. That 
That was really beautiful. Too bad we can't use that for the album. You're right. Yeah. You know what amazes me, Fred, is how these young people have taken, well, they managed to take all those Christmas songs and welded them together in a medley that covered the entire mood of the season. Thanks, mm -hmm. Dad. But we had to go through an awful lot of songs before we arrived at these. Well, but know. I think we got them all. Well, sure seems that way to me. It was just perfect, sweetheart. <laughs> There was one song in particular that we hated to lose. You and me both, baby. <laughs> Not that one, Joe. I mean the one about palm trees in Beverly Hills. Oh, yes, the palm trees in Beverly Hills. That's a great Christmas song. <laughs> I don't believe I ever heard that one. Want to sing it for him, Uncle Fred? Well, I think really Bing ought to do it, don't you? Oh, how am I going to sing it? I've never even heard it. Go, go right ahead. OK, if you insist. Harry? The sun is shining. The grass is green, the orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, L.A. But this is December the 24th, and I am longing to be up north. That's it? That, that's the whole song? Uh, just the verse. <laughs> you want to see the chorus? I'd like to see something, yeah. <laughs> uh, show them the sheet music. Oh, <laughs> now I am embarrassed. Even the dog knew the song. <laughs> I think I can take it from here. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen to hear Labels in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. May your days be merry and bright. And may all your Christmases be white. May your days be merry and bright. And may all your Christmases be white. Now from all of us to all of you, I wish you the joys of the holiday season every day of the year. And thank you, young Americans, and thank you, Joy Bushman. And Merry Christmas, Fred, from the Crosbys. Good night. <laughs>